Hey, another new project coming at you. Hit that subscribe button, notification bell below. Don't forget to leave me a comment. But I'm gonna list five things that I noticed about this Jeep that you need to make sure you check on every Jeep. Number one thing I noticed about this Jeep is I wanted to check out the lift kit and make sure everything was good and safe. Springs, all that seemed to be a, a store-bought kit. But every Jeep guy knows there's that hidden cheap lift kit that every everybody uses. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with these in conjunction with the right lift kit and if you use good quality stuff. But there is a problem when you start building homemade stuff and you don't have the craftsmanship or the ability. So, what I did notice is these look like somebody has cut them out and made them. Now, they didn't do a horrible job. As you can see, they're a little wide, so they've pinched in places. And I may be wrong, and if I am, tell me in the comment section. Those may be store-bought. But I've never seen one that had a square cut at the bottom and then was angled at the top. Again, over here, same way, angled, and it's a different grind. I don't trust them. Did the same thing right here, square, and you can see they didn't even go as far down, so their washer's bigger. So they've cut off a little bit. Little things like that. So yeah, the washer's actually bigger. Number two has to more do with the body and the rust. So when I see this Jeep, it's got a metal floor pan and honestly, looks pretty good. You can see it's been replaced. It's definitely not factory. That's Those ridges are not factory. You can see where it's been welded, ground off. Problem being, when I go underneath this Jeep, I start to see, well, they didn't cut it off smooth. They left chunks, and then they've just caulked their, some kind of a something up inside of it. Now, I don't think that that's necessarily going to be a problem for this Jeep and the guy, the way he's going to use it. It's a decent-looking Jeep. Floor pans are put in it. Those, if you're concerned years later, could cause you issues in the fact that they're going to hold stuff and rust again. Of course, any Jeep you're going to look at, you're going to have areas right in here that hold water and hold stuff, and then you've got spot welds down the side here, so keep an eye on them. Another thing to look at on the body of these, and I'll keep this as number two, is fold your windshield down and look right in here. This has a tendency right down through there to get water, gunk, and different things in it, hold it there, and create rust. This one's not too bad. That can be easily cleaned up, but you can see it's pretty, pretty heavily pitted right there and very thin at that spot. We can mitigate that, end user. That's not gonna be an issue for this Jeep. Third thing I kind of noticed about this Jeep, and I see this on a lot of Jeeps. I've seen all kinds of crazy hitch configurations. Jeeps were never really meant to tow. So people will put hitches just in the craziest way. This one looks like it's a an aftermarket hitch that someone later bolted a receiver hitch to. And you can see, you know, it's got the shape right here to go under. Got like a uh, couple angle brackets there, and it goes around. Now, you've got two, looks to be uh, half inch bolts holding on a receiver hitch. Last three, I believe, do not think that that is capable of pulling a trailer. First of all, this Jeep, the wheelbase, absolutely unsafe. Number two, these hitches, and the way these frames are built on the back side, there is not a whole lot of strength there. Do not expect to pull a lot of weight with these things. Number four, and this is one of the reasons that I've got this Jeep right now. If you can look, 
under this dash. Look at the rat's nest of horrible we have right there. There is a fuse block somewhere up in there. And that may be one of the worst things I've seen. Now, you can also lift this hood and see this particular Jeep has definitely been built. And when you say bought, not built, and you don't know how to wire, and you add tons of different stuff. So everything runs, it seems to do fine, but okay. Um, there's a whole lot of wiring in this thing that I really don't know where it's going because you know these Jeeps just did not have that much there. But that one's got a lot of it. Jeep guys get a bad name. Guys tend to buy Jeeps and they think they're gonna have just a, an old beater car, no top, they leave the things out all the time, jump in them, beat the crap out of them. They don't spend the money and they end up rigging the ignition, they rig the wiring to just kind of get them by. Plus, like I said, a lot of them stand out in the water and in the, in the weather all year because they don't have a good top on them. Always keep an eye on regardless of what the Jeep looks like. Keep an eye on your wiring harness. Another thing about this Jeep, uh, and another thing that I'm gonna probably be looking at trying to fix on this one, is when you go to lifting these Jeeps up, what you end up with is you need some way to get up in them. Well, there's no handles here. There's not a good way to get a hold of. There's not a good step. So people will end up throwing their hands and they'll grab this steering wheel and crank all with all it's got. Now, in all honesty, this one's pretty solid. But this has just absolutely blown my mind is what they've done. I think somebody's actually worked on this and you can see they, they put all this craftsmanship and love into it with a double worm clamp holding it together. But the steering wheel itself seems pretty solid. What you don't see about the steering wheel and I don't know if we can see it down here. Since this thing has a body lift, yeah, well, we can't get a good book at it. They did not extend the steering shaft when they did the body lift. So it's literally pulled the coupling at the bottom of the steering shaft apart. So I don't know how well it's hanging in there, but it's definitely pulled the, the guts out of it and it's not as safe as it should be. I won't say it's unsafe, but it's definitely not as safe as it should be. And I'll, that's something else that's being addressed as I go through this. Again, I've got a list of parts. I gotta get back with the guy and let him know what all I've found and uh, fix it. Now, one thing I may do, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna look very much into seeing if he'll let me take the body lift off this truck. Since it's not gonna be off-road, I don't think that rub will be an issue without that inch and a half body lift. But I definitely wanna find out before I just go and do it. This is bonus 2.0, and it's not something to look for, but it's something about this Jeep that kind of bothers me. The seats in the back of this thing, sitting sideways. Somebody has bolted. Yeah. If you're sitting way up in the air, well, I can tell you now, your head's above that roll bar. That's a good place to die.